girl here with another vintage haul video from the flea market. I hope you'll excuse my ultra casual attire. I was uh, getting ready to do some gardening and then I thought, well, I better get this done while I still have a little bit of light. So here I am and I made a nice big haul at the flea market this weekend and I'm just gonna show you what I got. And I will, as usual, start with the jewelry. I've got it all spread out everywhere. Let's see. Um, okay, so first I'm going to show you I got three things from a table that was three for five dollars. And as usual, you know, I found one thing that I liked and then I thought, well, you know, I better um, find two more things so I can get the best deal. And then I ended up putting the original thing that I wanted back and getting three different things. So very strange. Um, but I'll show you this first. This is a very intriguing piece. It is a bracelet that is marked MoMA, M-O-M-A, Japan. And um, it's got these magnets on the back side. And from what I can gather, it's supposed to be like a, a health bracelet. These are supposed to be rare earth magnets. And apparently these new sell for gobs of money. So, um, but I, I didn't really find much in the way of resale, so I'm going to have to do a little more research, but it just looks like a simple kind of a faux rose gold with rhinestone bracelets. But anyway, um, let's see, there's the mark on it, MoMA. And then the second thing I got was this Monet necklace which also is kind of intriguing and confusing all at the same time. There's what it looks like. It's got that kind of industrial look. It's very, very heavy. And then the top of it looks like this. It's got these, this kind of strange slide on it, like this. And then it has two fasteners. They're both fold-over clasps on either side. So I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to wear this. I gotta figure it out. As usual, Muffin is clawing something when I start making my video. Hey, shh, stop doing that. Don't do that. Uh, okay, and the third thing I got from this table is another mysterious piece. This is a pewter brooch. It's a brutalist style. It's got those nubbins, those little balls that I have come to associate with brutalist things. It almost looks like, it almost looks organic, like seed pods or something. The style is very similar to those done by, I can't remember now, never mind. But it's not signed, so um, I'm going to have to do a little more research. Um, I think, if nothing else, I can sell it for 15 or 18 dollars, but I'm hoping maybe I can figure out who made it and sell it for more than that. Okay, moving on to other jewelry. Muffin. Stop. I got this little, um, it's not little, it's kind of a big heart-shaped Victorian style locket. It's sterling silver and it does have a very nice, uh, like a box chain that's also sterling silver. And it is a Victorian style, but I don't think it's that old. I've kind of come to recognize this, um, the newer ones have this particular kind of bail, and they're marked 925. Please, please stop it. She really is trying to get my attention. Stop it. Naughty cat. Um, but I don't think they're new either. I think maybe they're from the 1970s when um, Victorian style really kind of saw a surge of popularity in the 70s and a little bit in the 80s too. Okay, I got this copper. It's a mid-century piece. Very nice quality. The maker is Kim, K-I-M. Uh, I was thinking that this was going to be a little more valuable than it is. I paid five dollars for it. Uh, I think I can probably sell it for 18 to 20, which is okay. Um, we got some turquoise jewelry. 
my dude that I always buy from was, was there, or I found him anyway this time. So I sold, uh, bought this really beautiful turquoise and sterling silver pendant for $10. I was a little surprised. That was kind of a low price for him. It's not marked, though, but it is sterling, I'm pretty sure. He doesn't sell anything but sterling. He's, he only sells really nice quality things. So, And then I got this ring, which has the three turquoise stones in it. However, <laughs> this ring has some issues. The band is broken, and also the band is quite out of round. It's actually still wearable. It's a huge size, though. Oh, my gosh, it's enormous. Um, I think I'm going to try and see if I can get someone to solder that back together. It looks like maybe even somebody added a segment to it to make it enormous. But uh, that's a nice ring, and he sold it to me for 20 um, with those three nice pieces of turquoise. That's not a bad price if I can get it fixed for not too much money. Uh, and then I got another turquoise ring. It's green turquoise. This one has a couple of little um, pyrite inclusions, which is different. Something I have never seen before. So I thought that made it kind of special, and that was $15. Uh, then I got this, uh, that's all the Native American jewelry, but I got this jadeite and sterling silver sand cast ring. It is marked sterling, but it's very hard to read, but it is in there. Uh, it needs cleaning up in a bad way. Um, the jade is not, it's not real shiny, but it is real jade. I've looked at it under the loop, and uh, I only paid $8 for that, so I was very happy to find that. Those can sell for a lot. If I can, if I can clean it up and get it looking spiffy, I might be able to sell it for, you know, maybe over $75, I'm not sure. And then this is a sterling silver ring with a rose and a vine. It's also a really big size. I think the big sizes sell better. I bought this from Mad Jack. He's an Etsy seller. He's a real nice guy. Um, he sold me that for $10, which was a really good price. And I got this Victorian brooch for $3 because it is missing more stones than it has. But those will be super easy because they're flat backs. I have so many flat back rhinestones. So that's no problem to fix. It's got the nice old um, C clip. So I do, because the, the pin extends on beyond the edge of the of the brooch, so that's a good indication that it's an older one. Uh, it's brass, but I just thought the design was super pretty, and three bucks is a pretty good price. I uh, do believe that is all the jewelry. So I'm just in no particular order. I will show you the rest of this. I got this cool carved wood and gilded mirror, kind of a uh, um, Hollywood Regency style. It's got some cherubs and and whatnot. The back doesn't look very old, but it's, I think it may have been refurbished because it looks kind of old to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just meant to look old. But it's pretty cool. That was $10. And this is one that I'm going to have to do some more research on, but as you can see, it's a seal or sea lion. Um, art glass paperweight. I love how the black and white really looks kind of like a sea lion's coat, the way they have those speckles. Uh, but anyway, I found a couple, or I found three of these online. Very, very, very similar. All three of them said it was from Sweden, but each one had a different maker attributed. So I'm going to have to do some more research, but they were selling for like really a lot of money, over a hundred dollars. And one of them, in one case, was selling for two seventy-five. I mean, I, that may have been an asking price, but I'm thinking it might be kind of special. So I'm gonna really look into it and see if I can figure out what it is. Um, I got this marine barometer. Unfortunately, 
it doesn't work. So this may have been not a good purchase, but it's kind of cool. It opens up. It's really filthy. Uh, it does have a lot of uh, oxidation. I think maybe this part is not brass and this part is. I'm not sure. I paid 20 bucks for it. Um, I'm pretty sure I can get my money back, but I might be able to get more depending. Um, stuff like this, it's got kind of a steampunk look to it. So, I don't know. We shall see. I've got this piece of Murano glass. It is the brand, it still has its label, which is super nice. It's got, uh, it's called Vimax. And, um, it's a little hard to read, but it does say Murano glass, and it says PO27. I don't know what that means. But it's kind of a Moser style, or like Bohemian glass. And you may not be able to see, but it's a very, very deep purple. And it is transparent. It's just very, very deep in color. And it's got this nice gold gilding. It's got a little bit of wear right there. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It looks like a little, um, it almost looks like a pipe rest. But I guess maybe it's a little dish for mints or something. Very cute. Um, oh, <laughs> at the end of the day, a lady was giving away some vintage science fiction books, so I picked up a couple for my husband. He has quite a collection. He likes to read them. So, um, anyway, there's one of them. He's already got the other one. He's already reading it. I got some glasses. These are, pro I'd say these are probably early to mid-1980s. The brand is Ropco, R-O-P-C-O, and this, I think this is the style is Jalen, J-A-I-L-A-N. Um, is it Dorky Thrifters? I hope I'm saying that right. Um, that sells so many glasses, it's kind of inspired me to keep my eyes open for good quality vintage glasses at a good price. And these were $5, so I thought that was pretty good. They're made in West Germany, and they are gold-filled. So um, I think that these will do okay. Uh, I saw some, there weren't very many Rockco out there. I saw one pair that was, I think, um, 45 or $50, something like that. But I think these are cooler than those. Uh, then I have this pair, which the only thing I can read on it, oh no, I take it back. These, these ones are avant-garde, made in France. Now, some of these I saw selling for like eighty to a hundred dollars. I don't know. I don't. I have my doubts about whether I could get that for these, but they are in very good condition. They're you know nineteen eighties style, I guess, and they've got a really neat kind of a little stripe on them. Cute. And then the third pair are these that are kind of white lavender sunglasses. And these just say um, France, is it France TJ, France TJ. I haven't figured out what maker they are or anything. There's nothing on the other arm. But these are, they're very nice quality. And I love the kind of purple and white. So, those are kind of cool. Let's see, let's get this out of the way. This <laughs> is a carved sandalwood box from, it's probably from Hong Kong, though I, because I've had two other ones that were very similar in style that were marked Hong Kong. This one's not marked. It could be from China. There's what the bottom looks like. It does have a problem in that it's missing the bottom part of the hasp. But still, it's really pretty cool. And it smells so good. Oh my gosh, it smells good. It looks very old. I paid $35 for this. I sold another one that was similar to this for $99. Um, this one is has a neat it has, you know, the sailboats on it. I really like the subject matter of the carving. And um, so we'll see. 
We'll see how much that having that missing part of the hasp hurts it. I got this brass and enamel business card holder. This was five dollars. I think this probably came from the 1980s. Um, it's in it's in really good condition. And did I say I paid five dollars for that? I, I'm not quite sure what I can get. That fifteen to twenty dollars probably. I got these two adorable little birdies. I couldn't read what was on that label, and um, I was hoping against hope that these were like German made because they look like they should be. But I think in the end they're probably uh, made in Japan. And I did find out what the company is, and now I've forgotten it. It begins with an A. Um, and they were like an importer. And a lot of the things they imported were from Japan. But these are not marked Japan, so I'm not quite sure. But I think I can probably only get about $15 for the pair. I, I did see a couple of others online. Uh, this one, anyway, I saw. This little fat one. Um, and I paid $3 for the two of them together, so not out too much money. I got this bell. It's a brass bell, like a front door, I know front door, a front desk bell. It's got sunflowers on it. Uh, this is not, it, it does have a thing on the bottom that says made in Italy, but it's got a barcode on it, so it's, it's not terribly old. I saw a couple of others on Etsy that say they date either from the 70s or the 80s. And I did pay $5 for that. I can probably sell it for, again, like 15 to 18. But I've had good luck with these type of bells before. They seem to sell quickly. Oh, hi, Muffin. You want to come say hi? Come on. Come on up. Come on. Come on. Ooh, you want to come up? Come on. Don't you want to say hi? No, she wants to claw the rug. Stop it. Okay. I guess she isn't going to come visit. Um, this is the last thing I got, which is a silver plate um, caddy for these three hand-painted jars. I think these would have held sugar, cinnamon, and maybe honey. And it was like for your breakfast toast or something. Um, like maybe this is a muffin ear? I'm not sure. i got to look into it a little more. This one, though, does have remnants of cinnamon in the jar, so I'm pretty sure it held cinnamon. It is made by Pearpoint. It is Art Nouveau, and it's probably early 20th century, maybe even a little earlier than that. Um, it's in reasonably good condition. The plating's gone, which it always is on this quadruple plate stuff. Uh, one of the jar tops doesn't want to come off, and this one is kind of comes off too easily. But, you know, the jars are in good shape. They're not chipped or cracked, and the paint is in pretty good shape. So, I don't know. But I just thought it was cute, and I paid $10 for that. Could have been too much, but it's so cute. It's just so cute. Very shabby chic. Uh, okay, I think that is it for my haul. Thanks so much for watching. These items are, or soon will be, for sale in my shop at vintagedazzle.etsy.com. I will put the... I will put the links down below. Wait, I'm going to capture this beast. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, here she is. Yeah. Because the people like to see you. The people like to see you. Yeah. Okay, you can go away now. Oh, what a cat. Okay, um, anyway, <laughs> vintagedazzle.etsy.com. A few of them might end up on eBay. I thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, and share and comment. I do try to reply to all comments. And um, that's it. I'll see you next time with another... I don't know what I'll be back with. Probably, maybe a sales video after this. All right. Thanks. Bye.